Okay, so last um, thing we're going to finish up with law of signs is uh, what happens when we have the two solution and the no solution. So we, in the homework, we just went through another one where the second solution didn't work. Okay, and we did one yesterday. Um, today, it's, it's going to work. Right? So we'll see what happens. So just a reminder of, of what the law of signs says. So remember, it's three different fractions. You never use all three parts at the same time. You only use two. Either the first two, the last two, or the first one and the last one. And for the law of signs, you're always setting up a proportion, which you then cross multiply every single time. When we do law of cosines tomorrow, um, we won't have any proportions. Okay, so we're not going to do cross multiplying. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little different. All right. Um, Someone remind me, what are the, um, the three cases that we use law of signs for? Um, thinking of those, those three letters. Yep. Angle, side. Yep. Angle, side, angle. That's where you know two angles and the side that connects the two. Mm -hmm. Side, angle, angle. Side, angle, angle. Again, that's where you know two angles and a side, but now the side you know is the one that's not connecting the two angles. Yep. Side, side, angle. And side, side, angle. That's where you know two sides and an angle, but the angle you know is not where the two sides meet. Right? If it was where the two sides meet, that's side, angle, side. Uh, we can't do that yet. Right? So this is the one where you want to be careful. That one can have zero, one, or two solutions. Okay, so let's, um, let's take a look. Okay, so I'll make a sketch and uh, see what type of triangle it is. Hopefully it's one of those three that we just mentioned. If it's not, we're not using law of signs to figure it out. Remember, when I make a sketch, it is not to scale. I just want to see what's across from what, what angles and what sides I know. Okay, so I'm going to put A across from alpha, put B across from beta, C across from gamma. So if we look at it, we've got two sides, and we've got an angle, and the angle is not where the two sides meet. That's gamma. So it is side, side, angle, SSA. Right. So out of everything that we learned, everything we learned yesterday, everything we're going to learn tomorrow, there are five different cases. Side, side, angle is the only one where you got to do this two solution and check for all that stuff. Okay? That's not going to happen tomorrow at all. Never happens with law of cosines. All right, um, so Alyssa, since this is side-side angle, this is the one where we have to find things in a certain order. Um, do you remember what I said we have to find first here? Yeah, you gotta do your angle first. Now, I would suggest if you make a box like that, leave enough room in the bottom of that box. You might, you might need that. Okay, so let's set this up to find beta. Um, Andrew, can you... Um, fill in one half of my uh, proportion to find beta? Sine of 35 degrees over 6. Yep. And he didn't tell me where to put it. I put it on the left. Does it matter? <laughs> no, you're going to cross multiply. <laughs> so everything's going to get mixed anyway. So. You can put it on the left, you can put it on the right. So sine 35 over 6. Uh, and Max, what's going to go um, on the other side to finish that up? Do you remember um, what always goes in the top with the law of signs? Not sure. Brianna, can you help them out? Uh, sine over 8. Right. Sine always goes in the top, okay, sine of your angle. So sine beta over 8. The 
Anytime you're doing law of sines and you get the variable inside the sine function, that's, that's the one you gotta watch out. Now we gotta check for all the two solution, no solution stuff. The other way I can tell right off the bat without even making a picture that this is the, the longest possible case, I've got a row with everything in it. That means it's law of sines. I also have a row with nothing in it and no way to find anything in that row right off the bat. That tells me that this is the worst situation in terms of how long it could take. Okay. And the picture tells me that too. Okay, so let's cross multiply. Um, Sebastian, can you tell me um, what I get when I uh, cross multiply? Morning, um, the right side would be 6 sine beta and then it would be um, 8 sine 35 degrees. Yep. So we get that step. Now, if you did two steps there, you could have also put the six on the other side at the same time. If not, you want to write it all out, that's okay too. Um, but for now, we got to move the six. Um, so Courtney, um, how would I put the six on the other side? You could divide. Right, this is a multiplication, that's arithmetic. You can undo arithmetic with other arithmetic. That's multiplication, we want division. So we're gonna divide by six. 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 Now, yes, you can reduce the eight and the six. I wouldn't bother. Right? You're gonna type it into the calculator. The calculator doesn't care if you reduce or not. Okay? Plus, if you reduce it and you just you make a mistake, now you just messed it up. Doing a step you didn't even really have to do. All right. So now we've got sine beta equals eight sine thirty-five over six. Now there is no more arithmetic on the left-hand side. There's no more adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. We've got a function. We have to get rid of that function now. Right. Um, so Matt, how do I get rid of the um, sine function? You need to take the inverse sign. Yep. We take the inverse sign. That's gone. And we're going to take the inverse sign over here. So remember, that's not multiplication. I'm going to take all of this stuff and plug it into this inverse sine function and see what it gives me. So we're going to type that in. Once we type it in, we're going to know right away whether we have a two solution, a no solution, or a one solution. Okay. Let's see what happens. So again, make sure you're still in degrees. Uh, don't try to reduce or cancel anything. Just type it in the way you see it. Inverse sine, 8 sine, 35. Now, if you don't close the parentheses, I already showed you guys what happens. It comes out wrong. So close it. Divide by 6. Not a big deal if you close it here or not. Okay, so this isn't a no solution. I know that because I just got a solution. Okay. If it was a no solution, the calculator would say error right now. Because it, you'll, you'll see that later on. Okay, but 49.886 is definitely at least one solution. So let's put that right here. Um, Anthony, what do I subtract that from to get the second answer? Uh, I don't know. Not sure. Justin, do you remember? Uh, 180. Yep, 180. Uh, I'm going to subtract it from 180. Now, once you get that, you still got to check if it actually works. Hopefully it doesn't work, and then we don't even have to deal with it. We just cross it out. But if it does work, then we got to deal with it. Okay, so let's see. You get 180 minus 49.886. So if there is another answer to this problem, it's 130.114. How do we figure out if that angle fits in my triangle? What do I have to check? Yeah? You have to check to make sure it fits with alpha. Right, you have to make sure it fits with the one you were given, all right? So if there's another answer, it's 130. Can you fit 130 and 35 in the same triangle? Yeah, that's only 165. So it's small enough this time that it works. So now we have to write that one down too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call that my, my first answer for beta, and I'm gonna call this my, my second answer. Right, so 
So 130.114. Now, if we're going to get two answers for beta, that means you're getting two answers for everything. Okay? Everything that you have to find. Don't ever worry about the stuff that they gave you. That, that's done. Okay? A, B, and alpha, don't worry about it. But we're going to get two answers here. And we're going to get two answers here. It's not a harder problem, it's a longer problem. We have to do exactly the same stuff twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, just I'm going to put some colors up here just to kind of show you we're we're really solving two problems at the same time. Okay, I'll call it like my red red problem and, and green problem. So in the red problem, you have this angle, this angle, and that angle. Alpha, beta one, gamma one. Okay. In the green problem, you have Alpha, beta 2, gamma 2. Notice alpha is in both. Alpha is being shared between each triangle we're solving. Right. So three red dots, that, those are my three angles in the red problem. Three green dots, those are my three angles in the green problem. Okay. We can do the same thing for the sides. Basically, whatever was given to you is in both. Okay. And then the ones are in the red triangle, and the twos are all the green triangle. Okay, the way I'm doing it. So A is in the red, B is in the red, C1 is in the red. A is also in the green, B is also in the green, and C2 is in the green. So now I should have six green and six red dots representing the three sides and three angles. Okay, so now that we've got our beta 1 and beta 2, we can now look at getting gamma 1 and gamma 2. How would I get gamma 1? I think I know how I, how I would get that, yeah. Add alpha 1 and beta 1. Add, can you say it again? I said add alpha and then beta 1. Yep. So we're going to add alpha and beta 1 because those are the two angles in the red. And whatever's left, that's going to be gamma. Okay, so let's see what we got. So 180 uh, minus the 35. So I can add them. I'm just doing it in two steps. So minus that one and then minus 49.886. So in the red triangle, that will leave you with 95.114. Now, you've got enough information at this point. You could go ahead and get C1 if you want. We're going to have to get it eventually, but I, I kind of like to just finish the angles off first. Okay. Then I'll, I'll deal with the sides. Okay. Um, how about gamma 2? How about, um, yeah. Add 35 more 30. Yep. Yeah. You're going to add. The 35 and the 130.114, that's going to give you 165.114 and subtract that from 180. So 180 minus 165.114. And we get 14.886. Right, so out of the six things we have to find, we've got four of them now. We've got two left, C1 and C2. Uh, let's let's do C1 first. Right, let's go down here. So remember, C1 is in the red triangle. So you have to pick a red row that is complete. Well, there are two rows in that table that are red that are complete. You've got B and beta 1. You could use that, that's a red row. Or you could use A and alpha. That's also a red row. Which, um, which row do you think I should use? Yeah. A and alpha. Yeah, how come? 
Because like you know that's the answer, you didn't solve it, you could be wrong. Yep. I'm going to stick with the top row. Also, no decimals there. Much easier. I don't have to work with, with decimals. So we're going to have sine 35 over 6, just like we did way back at the beginning. Okay. So sine 35 over 6 equals. And now we're finding C1. So to find C1, do you think I'm going to use gamma 1 or gamma 2? Gamma 1. Gamma 1 to find C1. Gamma 2 to find C2. Uh, 95114 over C1. Sine 95114. Okay, so let's, um, let's type that in and um, see what we get. So it's going to be 6 sine 95.114 um, divided by sine 35. Six sine ninety five point one one four. Do I need to put a parenthesis at the end of that? Yes. If I don't, it's it's gonna mess up. Divided by sine thirty five. Do I need to put a parenthesis there? No. It's not really important. No. Okay. Ten point four one nine. So that's C one. Okay. Now we gotta find C two. C2 is in the green triangle. So now we need to use a green row that's complete. Well, you've got a green row right there, B and beta 2, or A and alpha. I'm just going to go with A and alpha again. Same reason I went with it last time. So sine 35 over 6. Uh, you know what? Let's just put it over here. I don't have to keep scrolling up and down. Um, so sine 35 over 6 <coughs> equals, and how about, uh, Alex, can you tell me what I'm going to put on the other side? Uh, C2 on the bottom. Okay. And then sine B, the beta. Um, so we've already done, so beta was the very first one we had to use. So we're, we're done, we're done with beta. What angle would you use to find C2? Oh, I mean, 14.886. Uh, yeah, gamma 2. Yeah, 14.886. Okay, so we'll cross multiply and uh, see what we get. So 6 sine 14 divided by sine 35. Now, before I type that in, I can check. Okay, just focus. I know there's a lot of information here. Just look at the green one. Out of the green ones, alpha, beta 2, and gamma 2, gamma 2 is the smallest. So I'm going to expect C2 to be the smallest. So let's look at the green sides and see what we got so far. 6 and 8. So it's definitely going to be smaller than 6. But remember, when you add any two sides together, it's going to be bigger than the third. So like C2 couldn't come out to 1. That's too small. Because then 1 plus 6 is not bigger than 8. Right? So it's got to be bigger than 2. But it has to be smaller than 6. Other than that, I can't tell you anything else until I type it. But it's going to be between 2 and 6. Okay, let's see what we get. Um, so 6 sine 14886 divided by sine 35. Okay, 2.687. Yeah. Okay, so on a test, that would be six problems that we just did. And you'd get partial credit for each one that you get right. I grade each answer as a separate, separate question. Okay, any uh, questions on any steps there? Okay, if, if you get a question, we'll probably have a little time at the end of class where um, you'll be able to start some of the homework, so you could try one, and then if you run into trouble, you could ask me. All right, so 
what I want to do is I'm going to show you visually how that can happen. Because some people are like, how, how could you be given information and get two different answers out of it? Right? Like, sometimes people understand like the math and what you have to do, but it just doesn't really make sense why it happens. So I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to keep two sides exactly the same. I'm going to keep one of the angles the same, but I'm going to draw a completely different triangle than the one you see there. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with this and make a copy of it. First, does everyone agree that that and that are still the same? Okay, so they have, they have a side that's exactly the same length. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this side, and make a copy of it, and I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna flip it like that. Is that still the same length as it was before? Yes. Yeah, it's just a mirror image. So that and that, if you measured them, would be exactly the same. So these triangles share a side, have another side length in common, and now I'm just going to make, make the bottom, okay, like this. Okay, and if you're looking and you're like, well, what's the angle that they have in common? Let me group this all together. It's right there. It's in the lower left. They each have exactly the same angle. So this angle, if you were to use a protractor and measure it, is exactly the same as that angle. So I kept two of the sides exactly the same length, just like A and alpha, or A and B, two sides exactly the same in each problem, the red and the green, and one angle exactly the same in the red and the green. That's what I just drew. So that's visually how you can get two answers. Now, any other type of problem we do, angle side angle, stuff like that, if I gave you all, I said, all right, here's an angle of 50, a side of three, and an angle of 40. I want you to draw to scale the rest of all the information when you solve it. Everyone would look exactly the same. Okay? But this is the kind of problem that if I said, okay, here's some information, I want you to draw to scale the triangle you could make, given this information. Some of you might do the top one. Some of you might do the bottom one. Depends how, how you thought about it. But this is the only time that can happen. Okay, so that's um, why that can happen. All right, let's, um, let's look at this one. Without making a sketch, uh, can somebody tell me why this is law of sines? Just something about the table. Yeah. Because C and M are both Okay, we've we got a full row. Now, can anyone tell me, just by looking at the table, why this is the the worst law of sines case? What is it about the table that tells me I gotta check for the two solutions and all that stuff? Yeah? I have to find two angles, which basically means you've got a row that's empty. Okay, when you have a row that's totally empty, and you have no way to find anything in that row at all, you're, you're doing the long law of sines. Okay? I mean, it could end up being short. If it's a no solution, we're going to be done this very quick. So, um, I don't have any choices here. Um, Emily, what do I have to find first? Uh, I can't get B because that's in a row with nothing in it. A? Yes. Uh, no, we have A. I'm sorry. A is 2. Sorry, alpha. Alpha. I meant. Sorry. Yeah. So we got to find alpha. Okay? It's the only partial row we have. The other row in the middle is empty. Forget about it. So let's find alpha. Um, Steven, can you give me my left-hand side of the proportion? Uh, sine over sine two over alpha. Um. So when we do sine, what do we always have to plug into a trig function? We're always plugging in an angle. 
Yes, yeah, so you have to plug in an angle right here. So what angle are we using? So the A. Would be what? Would be two. Would be two. Two's a side. Oh. So these, these are sides. The other side is angles, and we only know one angle. Also 50. 50, right. So sine 50. And what's going to go in the bottom? Uh, one. Uh, yeah, one. Okay, so there's my left-hand side. Now my right-hand side, we're solving for alpha. Sine alpha over 2. Now, since it's just sine 50 divided by 1, when the cross multiply, it's going to be super simple. Right? It's just 1 sine alpha equals 2 sine 50. And now my last step is to do inverse sine. So alpha equals the inverse sine of 2 sine 50. Now, I just want to look at what 2 sine 50 comes up to, just for a second. And then, then I'll do inverse sine after. So 2 sine 50 comes out to one, about 1.5. Anyone remember from, uh, from last week when we drew sine, how high did it normally go? It only went to 1, right? It doesn't go to 1.5, unless you stretch it or you shift it or something like that. But if you don't, if you just leave it the way it is, it doesn't go to 1.5. So by trying to find the inverse sine of 2 sine 50, you're basically asking this question. Let's look at that. Here's your graph of sine. Nice, slow graph of sine. You're basically asking where those cross. Where do they cross? Nowhere. Maybe later on down the screen? No, never. They're never going to cross. All right. So when you go to type this in, watch what happens. Inverse sine, 2, sine, 50. Okay, calculator's trying to figure out where they cross. It's like, what are you doing? No, they don't. You get an error. Doesn't work. So what that means is there is no solution for alpha. There's no solution. Now, if there's no solution for alpha, what else can't you find? B, you, uh, B or beta, right? Because normally I would have alpha now. I would add it up to gamma and subtract from 180. I can't do that. I don't have I don't have alpha. So once you know that there's a no solution. Everything is no solution. Okay. No solution. No solution. Meaning, if I actually gave you like sticks, one stick was two feet long, one stick was one feet long, and I said I want the angle to be 50, you can't, this specific angle to be 50, you couldn't put the sticks together and then add a third stick to ever make a triangle out of this. It wouldn't work. And I'll, I'll draw it to scale and show you why. Okay. Now, if you said another angle could be 50, then you're okay. But if you want that angle to be 50, never going to happen. The side is going to end up being too short. So you have the sine alpha and then 2 sine 50. How do you get rid of the sine alpha on one side? So I took the inverse sine. Inverse sine okay. cancels that out. Inverse okay. sine. You can't cancel out that. No, nope, not because of that 2 right there. If that 2 wasn't there, then um, we could do something with that. But, yeah. yeah. No, you, never, you can only cancel. It only ends up canceling out from one side in pretty much all of the problems that we do. OK, so now there's no solution. Any question, other questions on why this was no solution? OK, so let me. Uh, like I did the last case. Let me try to draw that. Okay. So I've got a side that's two units long and a side that's one unit long. Doesn't matter, inches, feet. I just need one side double the length of the other. All right, so let's make a side, let's call that one unit long. And let's put two of those together to make something two units long. I'm just gonna go like, that. Every time I lift my finger off it, it moves. There you go. 
Does everybody so far agree that the side on the top or the side on the bottom is double the length of the one on the top? Okay. So I have one side, one that's two, one that's one. So here's my triangle. A is going to be the side that's two units long. Okay. So what I have to do is set A at a 50 degree angle. Why? Because gamma is the angle between sides A and B. Okay. If, you look, um, if you look at the diagrams that we've drawn all week, gamma is always right between A and B. So let's put that at a 50 degree angle. Okay, the best I can. Uh, it's close enough. So we've got that at a, a 50 degree angle. Now I can't turn that, okay? Can't turn that. Because if I do, I'm gonna mess up the angle. So I gotta keep it just like that. Side C is somewhere over here. That's the side that's one unit long, okay? So it's gotta be, it's gotta be over there somewhere, right? I mean, you could put it at the bottom too. You could put it here. It doesn't matter where you put it, but it's, it's gotta be over on the right side. So let's put that over here. Now the way it is, for whatever reason, it doesn't let me rotate it. The only way I can rotate it is if I take it and then I group it with something and then I can erase what I grouped it with. But now I've got that little green handle and I can rotate it. I, I don't know, just the way it works. All right, so we've got that. Right about, you can put that like that. We can turn that any way we want. There's no, there's no restriction on what this angle has to be. Okay, so you can make it straight, make it that way, whatever you want to do. Now, bottom side, you can make it as long or as short as you want. It's up to you. What you can't do is you can't turn it, you can't rotate it, because you're going to mess up that 50 degree angle right here. So, is there any way that I can make this side connect to that side? No, I mean, I can shorten this, that's okay, you can do that. You can turn this a little bit if you want it. But no matter what you do, it just, it's not long enough to ever connect, okay? Couple ways I could make it connect. Allow me to make this side longer. Okay? Say I could make that side three units long, okay? Then it, then it would reach, okay? Or allow me to change this angle. Maybe make it like a, like a 20 degree angle then I could bring that side up like that, okay? But if I can't change either one of those things, I'm stuck. So that's, that's a no solution, okay? And that was all done to scale. That actually is a 50 degree angle. I, I measured it with, um, there's like a angle thing in my computer. So I, that was all to scale. It's the only drawing I've ever drawn to scale this week. Right. Any questions on that one? All right, so let's take a look. Um, i got two word problems to finish up. We'll see. Maybe we'll do one, maybe we'll do two. I'm not sure. All right, so the first problem uh, is basically about somebody measuring the height of an object in front of them. The person measuring it, maybe it's like a, could be a tree. Maybe it's a mountain. Whatever it is, there's an object in front of them. They want to measure the height. And they don't know how far away the object is. Okay. Maybe the object could be like six, seven miles away. And they can see it. And they want to know how tall it is. Okay. But they don't want to have to like drive to it and figure out how far away they are from it. Okay. If you want to measure the height of something and you know how far away you are from it, it's a lot easier. If you don't know how far away you are, you can still figure out how tall the thing is in front of you, but it involves a little more, uh, little more work. So what you basically have to do is take two sightings of what it is you're trying to measure from different spots. So like, let's say I was trying to measure the height of that door, right? I mean, I could just measure that easy, but let's say I, I, I could, you know, it's a big, tall tree. I would have to stand in one spot, measure something, and then back up and measure something again. I've got to measure something twice from two different spots, and I can get how tall the object is in front of me. 
what I do have to know is between the two sightings I do, how far back did I walk? That should be easy to measure. Especially if, if you're in a vehicle, just measure it with your vehicle. Drive straight, straight back wherever you're, you're measuring. Um, all right, so we're assuming this is nice and simple, like, like an open desert. Like there's no obstacles. You can walk anywhere you need to, no problem. If you're in the woods or something, that could complicate it because you might not be able to see what it is you're trying to measure. If you can't see what you're trying to measure, you can't do it either. All right. So we're going to take two different sightings. And what we're going to measure each time is what's called the angle of elevation. So imagine I had a target like above the door and I had like a laser and I'm trying to aim it at that target. My laser is sitting on the table. I would have to take the laser and I would have to tilt it up at a certain angle to aim it at the target. Right? That angle that I have to tilt the laser at, that's the angle of elevation. So that's basically what you can imagine, right? Whoever's doing this, they have a, maybe like a tripod, maybe there's a scope on it, or maybe there is a laser, and they're pointing that laser at the peak of the mountain, or whatever it is they're, they're trying to measure. Right? And when they do it the first time, they get an angle of 47 degrees. It's the angle that the laser would point at. Then they back up and they do it again. And the second time they do it, they get an angle of 35 degrees. Now, if you think about it, the angle should go down. Right? Think about if you're in like a movie theater and you're right at the screen, very steep angle. The further back you go, the less steep of an angle you have to look at the screen at because you're further away. So that's why the angle is a little bit lower when the person backs up. Now, knowing those two angles and the fact that you're 900 meters apart between the two sightings that you did, you can figure out exactly how tall the object is in front of you. So the, again, the device that the person would use is probably a transit. If you're, um, if you're in carpentry, you might might want to use one of those too, like when you're building a house. Probably not indoors, but more outdoors. And for our purpose, we're just going to make it simple and assume the transit is level with the ground. That's probably not true. The transit is usually on a tripod, maybe four or five feet tall, and you're looking through it. Okay. So this is, if we assume it's level with the ground, we're going to throw our answer off by like the height of the, the tripod. But for what we're doing, that's not, not important. Okay, so any questions on kind of the idea of what's happening? Okay, a lot of information there. Um, what do you think we should do with all that information to make this problem easier to think about? All right, we could make a table. Um, I still think a table is gonna be hard for me to think about all this stuff though. It would organize some stuff, but it wouldn't make it easier for me to kind of see what's happening. Yeah. Just show a sketch. Yeah, let's just make a sketch. All right. So, first thing I'm going to need in my sketch, something very important. What is the mountain sitting on? Like where mountain's not floating. It's the ground. So let's let's put it in the ground. Here's the ground. Now, we also have a mountain. There's our mountain. <coughs> it's a really steep mountain. It gets flat though at one point. All right, so mountain. Um, maybe you're going to sit right here. You're going to have lunch at one point because it's nice and flat. And you're almost a quarter tall as the mountain, so you're a pretty tall person. <coughs> um, OK, so we're going to take two sightings of the mountain. One, two. Okay. Each time we take a sighting, the person is going to measure the angle right to the top of the mountain. So right to there. And let's just make that like a dotted line, because that's, that's like a laser beam, right? They point a laser right at the peak. We're going to back up, and we're going to do it again. So you point the laser at whatever it is you want to you measure. Now, 
what do we know about these two spots that the person measured from? How how far apart were they? Nine hundred meters. Okay. And the first time the person found the angle to the top of the mountain, what was the angle of elevation the first time? Yeah. Forty-seven. And what was the angle the second time after they backed up? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's everything we know from the from the problem. So what we are trying to find is this. That's the height of the mountain. Okay. Put that in a different color. Not. Okay. So that's that's the height. <coughs> now, if you look at that, um, how many different triangles do we have here? Two, three. three. Yeah, it depends on how you look at it, but really, I think I see three different triangles. I've got one right here. I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to move it down so I can kind of look at it. Now, if I can find the height of that triangle, that's all I that's what I really want to know. I just want to find that one thing. I know this is 47. So, why can't I why can't I get the height of that triangle? I mean, it's a right triangle, so that's even easier, right? Why don't I just use Sokotoa and just solve for the height? Or the Pythagorean theorem or something like that? I don't know the other sides. I don't have any sides in this triangle. So until you get a side in this triangle, you can't find the height. So we are going to use this triangle in a minute, but we've got to figure out something else first. So let's look at this triangle. Right here. We've got a lot of information in that triangle. Well, we've got some information, but we've got a lot more information we can figure out without doing anything too fancy um, at first. Does anyone see something else I can figure out inside this red triangle? I'll just label this is 35. This is 900. Courtney? You can find the other, like the obtuse angle. Yeah, we can get that obtuse angle. How would you get it? Because, so, 40, 47 is like the, the other angle, and they're on a straight line. So mm -hmm. you can subtract 47 from 180. Yeah. 180 minus 47. So now I know this is 133. What else can I find now that I have that? I can get the angle on the top. The reason the top angle is the key to the whole thing here is because if you want to use the law of sines, you need to know a side and an angle across from it. That's a full row. So that's what we're doing right now. We're making a full row. Okay, so let's get this last angle and then we'll know enough information. And ultimately what I'm really, what I'm really trying to find in this red triangle, you okay? I'm trying to find this side right here. That side that matches up with the black one. That's, that's what I'm looking for. If I can find that side in red, then that's the same as the hypotenuse in black. Then from there I'll be good. Okay, um, so let's see what that adds up to. So get 180 uh, minus 133 minus 35. So that angle up at the top is 12. Now we're going to set up law of sines to find this side, which is also this side. And then I can find the height. So the tricky thing about this one is you can't find what you want right away. It's impossible. You have to find something else first. That's why I said to you, if you knew how far away the mountain was from you, 
you would already know this side right here. That's how far away you are from the mountain. And then you can find the height directly. If you don't know how far away you are, you can still do it, but it involves an extra step and it involves log of signs. Okay. So let's see if we can find x. Now, you don't have to find everything. I don't care about this side. I don't need it. That's, that side's not important, so we're not even going to find it. Okay. So using the red triangle, anyone think they can fill in my law of sines? So think of it as sine of an angle divided by what's across from it. Forget about A, B, and C, because I'm, I'm using X. Yep? The sine of 12 over 900. Perfect. Sine of 12 over 900 equals what angle would I use to find x? Use the angle that's across from it. That's the row. Sine of 35 over x. Okay, let's um, see what we get for x. It's going to be 900 sine 35. And then divide by sine 12. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna round it off because um, it's it's not gonna come out nice. All right, so we get 900 sine 35 divided by sine 12. So we get 2,482.9. Is that the height of the mountain? No, that's x. 2,482.9. So I just found that x. But now I've got a side in my right triangle, and I can finish this off and find h. Now, that's a right triangle, so you can go back and use Sakatoa. If you want to use law of signs again, you can. But it's a lot easier to just use the Sakatoa. So here's my angle. Here's my side. Here's my other side. Just figure out the names of these two sides. Um, from the perspective of 47, um, Jason, what, what is side each? Opposite. Yep. And how about the 2,400? Jason. Mm, no, Jason would be down here. Hypotenuse, because it's across from the 90. Um, Gabe, what trig function has uh, opposite and hypotenuse in it? Yep. Sine of my angle equals, and Riley, what's going to go in the top? Uh, for the thing? Yeah. For like sine 35? Uh, sine 47. So we're doing it from the perspective of 47. Oh, um, h over the 2482. Yeah. Opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply each side by 2,482, and there's your answer. I'm going to approximate because we already rounded it, so it's not exact. So sine 47 times 2,482.9. That's the height of the mountain. Okay, let's see what we got. 2482.9 sine 47. If you type it in that way, you don't need any parentheses. You can just do it just like that. So 1815.9 um, meters. That's what I was looking for. Now I forgot the answer. 1815.9. So if you wanted to say, is that a tall mountain? Mm -hmm. For around here it would be. Um, I want to choose it as 2,000 feet. That's about probably 5,000 feet. So that would be taller than any mountain in Massachusetts, but not New Hampshire. So, okay. so any question on? 
It's a little tricky because you had to do um, you had to do something else first. But problem like that, there's tons of room for partial credit. Okay, all kinds of partial credit there. Um, so homework tonight is uh, same section as last night. Not that many problems. Uh, 29 to 35 odd, and 39 and 43. Uh, I think 29 to 35, those are just normal non-word problems. 39 and 43 are word problems. So we'll, um, we'll look at that tomorrow, and then tomorrow is the last day of new material for the week. Um, at most, you have one of these. One of these. Well, the word problem or what we did earlier? Uh, one word problem and one possible two solution, no solution. Just one.